The following section will look at the base engine design and base engine components. The cylinder block is a single piece gray iron casting that has been designed to accommodate the heavy duty rear gear train and in block camshaft. The engine is equipped with targeted piston cooling nozzles for cooling the underside of the pistons. The targeted piston cooling nozzles have an alignment pin that lines up with a notch in the block for proper orientation. The engine main bearings are of a tri-metal material. The upper bearings are identified by the oil drilling and by the letters UPR on the back face of the bearing. A 360 degree thrust bearing is located at the number four main bearing position. The thrust bearings are installed with the number four position upper and lower main bearing. The balanced crankshaft features a gear on the rear of the crankshaft used to drive the oil pump and rear gear train. The number four main cap houses the lower thrust bearings. The main caps are directional and need to be properly oriented when installed. The cylinder liners are a single piece mid-stop design featuring a single O-ring. The connecting rods are an angle fracture split design. The rod is laser etched at the intended fracture line and the cap is then separated utilizing a high momentum impact resulting in a unique surface on every connecting rod cap. The pistons are a closed skirt, one-piece piston design. The rods are drilled so that oil can travel through the rod and lubricate the piston pin. The connecting rod caps are held in place with four cap screws. A cylinder block stiffener plate is required. The block stiffener plate bolts to the underside of the cylinder block inside of the oil pan mounting surface. The stiffener plate adds rigidity to the sculpted cylinder block. The oil pump mounts to the block at the rear of the engine and is driven by the gear on the crankshaft. The rigid internal suction tube configuration depends on whether the oil pan is to be mounted as a front or rear sump configuration. The pan is designed to have a shallow sump to provide clearance for the oil pump if the pan is mounted as a front sump configuration. The front crank seal carrier mounts to the front of the block. The crank seal is press fit onto the crankshaft nose. This engine will have two different rear gear train options depending on the application, automotive or vocational. The rear gear housing and edge molded gasket are attached to the block with three different length cap screws. If replacing the rear gear housing, make sure that the proper length cap screws are used. The rear camshaft gear is held onto the camshaft with a rear clamping plate. The rear camshaft idler gear is a compound gear designed to interface with the rear camshaft gear and the crankshaft gear. This engine will have two different front gear train options depending on the application, automotive or vocational. Mounted on the front of the block, the front gear housing contains a camshaft thrust bearing, a camshaft idler gear, and the front camshaft gear and tone wheel. The front gear cover and gasket seal the front gear housing. Two camshaft followers are mounted in the block, one for cylinders 1, 2, and 3, and the other for cylinders 4, 5, and 6. The cylinder head is designed to accommodate the four valves per cylinder assembly. The rocker housing has been designed to be independent of the rocker assemblies and engine brakes, meaning that the rocker housing can be removed without removing the rocker assembly and engine brakes. An electrical pass-through connector passes through the rocker housing and connects the wiring harness to the injector solenoids and brake solenoids. 
The engine brakes provide two levels of braking, 50% and 100%. The rocker lever cover gasket and rocker lever cover seal the overhead. The flywheel housing seals the rear gear train. An access panel in the flywheel housing allows access to the rear camshaft gear without removing the flywheel housing. The rear crank seal is a press fit design. The one-piece flywheel and tone wheel provide an indicator for the engine crankshaft speed position sensor reading. The starter mounts to the front face of the flywheel housing on the left side of the engine. The air compressor mounts on the left side of the engine on the back side of the front gear housing. A coolant line routes coolant from the block to the air compressor, and another line returns the coolant to the left front of the rocker housing. Molded plastic handle locking dipsticks are offered on the left side of the engine. Lift brackets mounted at the front and rear of the engine assist in hoisting the engine. The belt-driven cartridge-style water pump mounts to the block on the right side of the engine and provides a mounting location for the coolant filter head. The oil cooler housing bolts to the coolant cavity cast into the side of the block. Coolant flows around the stainless steel oil cooler element plates, cooling the oil. The oil filter head mounts just below the oil cooler and contains a bypass valve. The engine utilizes a single Cummins filtration LF9001 oil filter. The water inlet connection mounts to the back side of the water pump. Two ports are available for OEM return lines on the water inlet. The coolant filter head mounts to the back side of the water pump, just below the water inlet connection. Multiple different coolant filters can be used, depending on the extended service requirements. The thermostat mounts in the coolant cavity in the rocker housing on the right side of the engine. An external bypass tube exits the bottom of the thermostat housing and carries coolant to the water inlet when the thermostat is closed. The engine water outlet is mounted to the thermostat housing and sends coolant back to the radiator when the thermostat is open. The optional block heater mounts to the rear of the block on the right side of the engine. An OEM coolant supply manifold mounted on the cylinder head provides five OEM supply ports for coolant accessories. The three-piece slip joint exhaust manifold mounts above the oil cooler. Alternate oil fill locations are available on the block and front gear housing. The viscous vibration damper and pulley mount to the front of the crankshaft. A drive adapter or mounting plate provides the ability to bar the engine from the square drive. If the engine is equipped with a drive adapter, a front PTO can be used. Depending on the application, there are different fan hub options and fan hub mounting locations on the block. A single-piece alternator refrigerant compressor bracket mounted on the right side of the front gear housing provides a mounting location for the alternator and refrigerant compressor.